We're going to pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for this rich time of worship together. Thank you for your Holy Spirit poured out upon us. Thank you for your word, your revelation of truth. And Father, we thank you for the freedom that we have in Christ. Lord, I pray right now that you, Holy Spirit, would speak to each one of us. As we wait upon you, speak. Refresh our hearts. Ignite our spirit. And just as we turn our eyes to you, Lord God, we turn afresh. And we thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord God, that you are growing new life in us. Thank you for the refreshing of your Holy Spirit now. In Jesus' name, amen. It was mentioned earlier that we are working through a series of spiritual warfare. And for some people, when they hear the term spiritual warfare, they, there's confusion that can sort of mount up and not know what it's really about. Other people, they go, oh, fantastic. It's great. We're sinking our teeth into this because as a church, we need to be aware of the battle that is before us and being able to actually take ground rather than continually feeling as if our feet are stuck in the mud. And so this, this series about spiritual warfare is about giving us some tools to equip us for the battle so that we can have victory in Christ. Because that is what we've been given, is a victory in Christ through his death and his resurrection. And last week, Roger shared with us about the, the two unseen realms. We've got the, the realm of the kingdom of light, but also the kingdom of darkness. And it's having that as spiritual eyes to be aware and alert as to those kingdoms and how they are actually working around us so that we are actually being careful in how we set foot to be walking in the spirit and walking in the kingdom of light. And I want to build on that today because I believe God is calling us, his church, to arise and to be ready. This, this cry around the world of us being able to pray. There you go. To pray. And be ready. You know, I just needed to do them. Yeah, but anyway, all right, would it work? But anyway, there, because there is much in the physical that wants to rob us of our eternal reward. And, and so this cry around our world at the moment of Christians who are crying out to God in prayer, it's actually a prayer first and foremost of repentance. That verse in Scripture, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and what turn from their wickedness, then I would heal their land. It's not only this prayer of repentance, but it's a prayer that God would heal our land right around the world. And, and as it was said just before, that prayer it started on the 18th of September with the Feast of Trumpets. And it concludes tomorrow with the Day of Atonement. And it's that call for us to be people who are praying, but repenting and turning to God and for God to heal our land. But how many times do we hear of people who have, who have repented? They've turned to God, but then it's not long after that that they end up going back and doing the very same things that they were doing beforehand. I feel like the verse, I love the verse out of Proverbs, but the same verse is then echoed in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22, as a dog returns to its vomit. Verse in Peter, it goes on to also say, and a sow that is washed returns to her wallowing in the mud. In both cases, the nature of the animal is not changed. It's merely something that is cosmetic. Now, I'm not saying that we are animals, okay? So don't you hear me say that. But the essence is the same. People um, can confess their sin, but they also need to then release that desire to sin. And unfortunately, there's too many people who are going, oh, I repent God, but then they go, oh, actually, I enjoyed doing that. And they go straight back to doing the same thing again. And their repentance is nullified. As Hebrew, it actually, Hebrews 12, 1, it talks about the, the sin that so easily entangles us. We can be so easily entangled by it that we don't even realize and we go, oh, no, what have I just stepped into? 
Today's message is a message of encouragement for us that we can actually have a spiritual victory over sin rather than it becoming something that's repetitive that we keep going back to. A bit like it's been described of a fly and a fly goes, bangs into a window and keeps banging into the window because they can't see that it's a window there. You know, we can at times be like that fly and keep banging into the, and not having the breakthrough because we keep going back to and being attracted to the sin rather than repenting and actually completely being released of it. I want to... Years ago. So today I want to bring the breakthrough of how we can actually have that breakthrough, move past the glass ceiling, past the glass window, and be able to actually go on and grow in our faith in Christ. Many years ago, there were the three R's. Anyone remember what the three R's were? Reading, writing, and arithmetic. Now, for those who are too young to remember that, it's because that was something in the 1800s. So, those who remember now showing your... No, not really. Um, (laughs) It's because it was actually said that reading, writing and arithmetic were these three key subjects. That if we mastered them, we would be, quote, move on in life and be successful. That was it. Now, the thing for this morning is God's given me the three R's. And it's not reading, writing and arithmetic. I want to share with you three R's and I believe it's so that we can actually move on in life and be successful in our spiritual growth in Christ. So, first of these R's is repent. We read in Matthew chapter 3 that John the Baptist said, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. The following chapter, Jesus echoed the very same words, Repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now, when we sin, or in accordance with Matthew chapter 18, have been told of our sin, hopefully our response is one of repentance or confessing our sin. And as 1 John 1 9 says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But repentance is not merely just this change of mind, but it is a radical change in a person's life their whole life that involves forsaking sin and turning or returning to God. Both the Old and the New Testament speak of repentance. New Testament, in the New Testament, it means to change one's mind, whereas in the Old Testament, there's two words that describe repentance. The first one, it uses, uses the phrase to return, to turn back or to come back. And in that context, it's used the majority of times of the Israelites that they were to turn back to God and away from following idols. The second context of this word repentance in the Old Testament is the meaning of to be sorry or to regret. So from this place of sorrow and regret, there is a turning or a coming back to God. In both the context of the Old and also New Testament, there's also both a noun and a verb that is used to describe the word repentance. One word that says it describes it as a noun and another word that describes it as a verb. Why is that important? Well, the noun describes a thing, something, uh, a thing that someone can do. Whereas the verb describes the action of actually doing it and following it through. The choice comes first and then the action follows. The problem is, some people, they will acknowledge their sin or acknowledge the choice of sin, you know, and recognise, hang on, I've done the wrong thing, but they'll never follow through with the action to repent of their sin. We have in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, it says, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. Worldly sorrow is acknowledging that, hey, I have done the wrong thing. That's the noun. But then there's no change. There's no transformation. There's no action that follows the verb. We can have worldly sorrow caused by being found out or suffering consequences or even being punished. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it leads to repentance. Whereas godly sorrow, it is tied to repentance as it appeals to the heart of God and desiring this reconciliation and restoration with God. If we do not repent, we'll actually remain in a place of worldly sorrow. Repentance is this beautiful gift given by God. 
And whilst most Christians will repent enough to be forgiven, sometimes it's not enough to be set free. Let me explain that with the second part, the second point, the second R. See, some, sometimes we see Christians who just keep getting stuck or going back on the old sin even though they've repented. What's the problem? Is their repentance not valid? Is their confession not something that they've gone through all the steps and made sure that it was the right one? Well, we need to remember that we're in a spiritual battle and whilst repentance, it deals with the condition of our heart, there is actually another two things that deal with both mind and the body. And Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 6 says, Therefore say to the people of Israel, this is what the sovereign Lord says, repent and turn from your idols and renounce all your detestable practices. There's two parts that are necessary, repent and renounce. As Proverbs 28, 13 indicates, whoever conceals their sin does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. See, sin, it just entraps us. That's why 2 Corinthians 4.2 stipulates, rather we've renounced the secret and shameful ways. Let me share with you a quote that I came across and it says, have you renounced the hidden things of shame in your life? The things that your sense of honour or pride will not allow to come into the light? You can easily hide them. Is there a thought in your heart about anyone that you would not like to be brought into the light? Then renounce it as soon as it comes to mind. Renounce everything in its entirety until there is no hidden dishonesty or craftiness about you at all. Envy, jealousy and strife don't necessarily arise from your old sinful nature, uh, from your old nature of sin, but from the flesh which was used for these kinds of things in the past. You must maintain continual watchfulness so that nothing arises in your life that would cause you shame. Satan, what is his other name? He's known as the accuser. He wants to remind us of our past. And yes, we can remind him of his future. But the thing is, when we are reminded of our past, does that mean that we have unconfessed sin? No. We may have confessed the sin, but the problem is we may not have actually broken off the ties or the entanglement of that sin. That's why renouncing is so important. There are sometimes the, the spiritual doors that we need to close because of the sin that we did. We actually have opened up a spiritual door and that door needs to be sealed by the blood of Christ. For example, people who have been involved in Freemasonry, they need to renounce to break free of the ties of its spiritual hold. It is not enough for them just to go, oh, I repent of my sin and now I'm free. There's many a book that's been written and prayers that are detailed of how a person can be fully released from Freemasonry, but it comes through renouncing it. To renounce, it means to give up, refuse or resign by formal declaration. Repenting whilst it is directed towards God, renouncing is directed against the enemy. In renouncing, we are revoking any words that contradict God's word. It's a declaration that we will not align ourselves with the things that are opposed to God. We are cancelling any and all agreements with the enemy. We have been given the authority in Christ in his name to cancel any spiritually binding contract that we have made with the devil, be it through our words or actions. And sometimes this has been in complete ignorance and we haven't realised we've done it. Many believers will repent of their sin only to find themselves continually coming back and repeating those same failures. Renouncing is a means by which we cut off any legal right for Satan to have an open door to try and tempt us in that again and drag us down. Jesus said, in my name, they will drive out demons and they will speak new tongues. If we repent, we have the spiritual right to then cancel and renounce any legal hold that the enemy has had over us. It is then that we then experience this true freedom and joy in Christ. Do you know, let me share with you an ex experience, a example of this. It goes back to when I was in Adelaide. I received a phone call asking me to go and meet with a young couple. 
They're in the mid-20s. They just had their fourth miscarriage. Her sister had had three miscarriages. And I'm sitting with this couple, just talking with them. And then she finally says to me, why has God allowed this? What have we done wrong? And it wasn't that they'd done anything wrong. They were in a place of complete innocence. But I felt prompted by the Holy Spirit to ask this question. Have you got any Freemasonry in your background? Now, where I was meeting with this couple, they were at her mum's house. And they're sitting there in front of me and they both went, no. And from the other room, her mum calls out, yes, you have. Your grandfather was involved in that. And they went, oh, I didn't know that. So in comes the mum and she said, oh, yes, he was heavily involved. He did that for a number of years, blah, blah, blah. And on this went, and I just looked at them. And I said, do you know any of the background of Freemasonry and what it's about? No. And I said, do you mind if I actually come back and arrange a time for them to, uh, to meet with them, but also for the other sister and her husband to be there as well, for the family to all together and for me to have the opportunity to share with them about Freemasonry and what it actually you know, has entwined in it. They gave me that permission. Why did I want to do that? I wanted them to, uh, what we do not understand, we do not know how to value. I wanted them to have that understanding so that they would value it. So I did so, sat with them, we went through it, and at the end of it they went, Can, yeah, we want, we want to pray, we want to renounce this and break it off our lives. So we did so. We prayed, they repented. It wasn't their sin, but they repented of it from a generational. They then renounced the ties. And from there, we finished. Four months later, she was pregnant. And then her sister. Both of them went full term. I was actually going to this morning put up a photo of their families, of their multiple children. She has four children. Why? It all came from actually that revelation of realising that, you know what, there wasn't only something to be repented of, but it had to be broken. It had to be renounced in order for them to be set free. Repent. Renounce, and our third R is renew. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Being transformed is a process. It's not a single event. In fact, the Greek word for transformed is the same Greek word that is used of Jesus in the Gospels of his transfiguration. In Romans 12, it speaks of transformation being connected to the renewing of our mind. And I want to challenge us today to think not only of our mind here in our brain, but actually our mind in our heart. Why? Jesus says in Matthew 9, 4, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your heart? And Matthew 12, 34, For out of the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Ephesians 5, 8 reminds us that we were once in darkness, but now you are the light of the Lord. Walk in, live as children of light. We were once, but now we are. We were full of sin, but now we've been set free. We were covered in shame. Now we have been released and exalted by God and glorified in him. It's walking in that truth. We live as a new creation. It's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. It's not the new will come. It has come. So being renewed is actually tied to repentance. Whilst repentance is the changing of our mind to return or to turn back, the renewing is a change in the pattern of behaviour that actually led to that sin. So that we align ourselves with Jesus' prayer, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're aligning ourselves with God's rule and aligning to his image in us. As Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They'll soar on wings like eagles, they'll run and not grow weary, they'll walk and not be faint. The word renew literally means to exchange. We're exchanging weakness for God's strength. 
The same is true in repent, renounce, and renew. We're declaring a change in thinking rather than just the change in behavior. Exchanging the way our thinking and our behavior so that the presence of God fills our consciousness. We're in fact realigning our thinking to be in line with God's kingdom and taking on the mind and the character of Christ. There's this putting off in order to put on. Romans 13, 14 says, Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. And Colossians 3, we have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge and the image of its creator. So that whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. We renew in order to align ourselves to this new nature, God's image restored in us. Now, for many of us, we are fully aware of repentance We've practiced it for years. We've known it. We were taught it from a young age. We know repentance. And we know that, you know what? If I repent of my sin, there's that promise of God that I'll be forgiven. But I'm calling us today to go beyond just the repentance, to to break the ties, to break the spiritual strongholds, to close those spiritual doors that sometimes are open because of the sin that we have actually stepped into. And in doing so, it is because we want to renounce. Renouncing and closing those spiritual doors. Renouncing and breaking those ties. How do we renounce? I have to say, it's simple. Have that quiet place before God and go, God, is there anything in my life at the moment where I have an open spiritual door that I need to close? Don't overthink it. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Oh, yes, there is. (laughs) And you go, okay, God, what is that door? And immediately a word comes to mind, gossip. Guess what? Gossip is one of the ones we often ignore as Christians. All right. And so you're going there going, okay, well, what do you do? God's put on your heart and said, gossip's a door that you've actually got open. Firstly, repent of it. And then renounce. God, I want to renounce this partnership that I've had with gossip where I've allowed it to actually be filth from my mouth rather than your words of love. I renounce this tie and I now close that door in the authority of Christ Jesus and I seal it by the blood of Christ Jesus. Renounce it. Break the ties, break the holes so that that way we're not going back and repeating the same sins again. And you know, you may have dealt with that one and go, okay, cool, I can move on. And God goes, no, there's actually more. Okay, sit, wait before God. What else is there, God, that Let's close each of the spiritual doors. Why? Because sin is there and it wants to entrap us. But we have been given the spiritual authority in Christ to be set free from it. So let's walk as people who have been free, who are free and have been set free. So the third and final part is then renew. Renew our mind, renew our heart, knowing that out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. We want that spiritual victory. Repent, renounce, and renew. I'm going to get you this morning to just sit still before God as we finish. And ask God, God, is there anything in my life at the moment, spiritual doors that are open that need to be closed? Is there any part of my life where there's things been happening And they keep coming back and they keep coming back and they keep coming back. And God goes, yeah, that one was a generational one. It's time you actually broke the ties. And maybe this morning you are actually also feeling that God's going, you know what, you can't do that one alone. I need you to step forward so that you can get prayer. Someone else has to guide you in that one. Someone else is going to stand with you and help you have freedom in Christ in this. So this morning, just close your eyes. Just have this time before God.
some of you this morning just feel like maybe there's just a, a wall hindering you at the moment. And you're asking God, what is it? Just believe that there's a wall for some because of the word hate and unforgiveness. If that's you, then ask God, who is it that you need to forgive to have that breakthrough and to close that spiritual door to hatred? Another word I get is the word deceit. A spiritual door that needs to be closed. Anger. There's another door that needs to be closed. And with that, it's rage. Another one there, greed. And deceit. Know that we are more than conquerors in Christ who loves us. Father God, Christ came to set us free. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but Jesus said he has come that we would have life and have it abundantly. Father, I just declare that over your people today, that abundant life in Christ. Father, that you would have your hedge of protection. Job speaks about the hedge of protection around each one. I declare your hedge of protection upon each one today. But in these transactions with you, Lord God, we thank you that we are able to break these generational curses and ties. We're able to break these ties of repetitive sin and we're able to see the victory in Christ and be transformed by the renewing of our heart, our mind in Christ. Father, this morning, where there's that repentance, the renouncing and the renewing, Father, we thank you that with that comes that promise of transformation. For we are a new creation in Christ. The old has gone, the new has come. For those who this morning have felt like there's been baggage that you've had to let go, just shrug your shoulders, let it fall to the ground. And Father God, we just declare, sweep it out now. Rushing wind, Holy Spirit, come. Blow it out and bring that fullness and freshness of life now. Because today is a new day and we walk and have victory in Christ. And so, Father, I pray you continue just to work in us that transformation, knowing that we're being transformed into your own image, into your own glory, because of your love that's being poured out for us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our victorious crown. Father, may we this day, as we continue to go into it, we, we pray that you, if there's more things that you want us to just be released of, put it on our hearts. Give us that space, that time to stop, rather than putting off to tomorrow what we can do today. And Father, we just declare again in the name of Christ Jesus, break off every chain that has bound us. Break off every chain now in the name of Christ Jesus. That we would walk in that freedom. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you for the freedom in Christ. Thank you that you, Lord God, what has been removed, you're now bringing in your truth. Let him fill you with that truth. Let him restore your true identity of who you are in Christ. Father, we thank you for the transformations that are happening right now. 
We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would appreciate prayer at all, please come forward. We'd love to pray with you and just to be able to share with you. And uh, otherwise, have a wonderful day. Enjoy. And we look forward to being able to catch up with you soon. All right. Lord bless you.